Thank you for uh, joining our uh, webinar with uh, Brock Falconer from uh, Illinois Mutual. He's the uh, disability specialist here in the Western region for the United States, and uh, he deals with many lines of products uh, with disability and many different uh, cool products that you can actually learn about, uh, especially on the uh, business side, on the individual side. So um, as we go along, more people will probably join, more agents. But uh, without further ado, Brock, take it away. Thanks, Oscar. Really appreciate it. And today, guys, just so you know, uh, my goal is to, I think, bring reality into this situation. And that is disability insurance sales is going to be an ancillary product for you, one that I hope today I can show some con some congruency between your proprietary markets and where disability can fit, again, congruently with them. Uh, so let's get started, again, talking about how disability insurance is another tool for your tool belt. Uh, let's face it, again, your proprietary focus is going to be more on life insurance, investments, retirement, property and casualty, risk protection. Um, but let's think about ways in which we can, again, create some connective tissue between disability and some of these other markets. Number one, I find it very odd, and I don't know when this happened. It definitely was before I jumped into the industry in 07. But life insurance and disability seem to be on separate train tracks. One thing I don't understand about that is I guarantee no one has had any of their life insurance clients become sick after they died. The simple fact is, is life insurance as being the sole focus and the initial focus is really ensuring what potentially would happen second. Um, the disabling event is six times more likely to happen during a working career than life insurance, or I should say dying prematurely. Uh, does that mean we're killing the power and the reason for selling life insurance? In no way, shape, or form. Uh, we know that life insurance is utilized for a tax and investment tool as much as uh, a face amount for family and uh, dependents, but I think that there's a lot more opportunity to utilize disability insurance and life insurance as a package deal for clients, of course, where it fits and they're still in the working years and young enough to get covered and healthy enough to get covered, of course. But again, I think there's a way to really attach better uh, between the two product lines and really keep more of an all-encompassing focus for the entire risk protection package. Because I don't think we can truly call ourselves risk protectors if we're not bringing in income protection or paycheck insurance along with life insurance. Uh, investments and retirements, uh, very similar as well. Uh, again, a lot of these folks are potentially going to be beyond when they would purchase DI, but I think I can show you quickly and easily today how, again, there's a great referral opportunity with these clients when talking about and bringing up the idea of income protection. Property and casualty is an absolute no-brainer. Uh, we know it's always a multiple line strategy for folks in this industry that focus primarily on the property and casualty, whether just on the individual side or more often you know, with business liabilities and, and uh, business-specific insurances. Um, this is a uber competitive market space. And what better than bringing in another multiple line that ensures the rest of the lines as well as has more persistency than you'll typically ever see in these specific lines. Because let's face it, with disability insurance, it's not a very competitive market. Once a policy is in place, it likely is the best policy that can ever be in place, best as far as definitions because very few of them vary. Uh, and obviously you're going to be paying a lower premium the younger you purchase this. So essentially the day it's in force is almost the cheapest day you could ever have it in force, or I should say the most competitively priced product that you could have. So on the life side, again, the likelihood of suffering a disabling event versus a premature death, much more likely, six times more likely to suffer a disabling event. Uh, again, bring this in with the idea that, hey, let's make sure, again, we're protecting the entire risk on both ends of the fence. Also find it funny that life insurance is often described as income protection, which conceptually I completely get, but let's face it, uh, that's a pseudonym for disability insurance, income protection. When we talk about death uh, in some kind of social setting, it's thought of as being kind of a morbid way of speaking, right? You're talking about things that are morbid. Well, morbidity is, again, another pseudonym for disability insurance. Mortality is life insurance. So again, not sure why these trains got on different tracks, but I think there's a lot more opportunity to connect them. And that's really what my hope is today, bare minimum, to make sure that this conversation can be all encompassing with both ends of the fence. Selling them as a package, right? Someone's going to be preferred 
through our assumption on the life insurance side, maybe we quote them standard. If they're standard, maybe we quote them table one, table two. Why do we do that? Well, when we deliver the life insurance and become a hero because it's actually a better health rating than what we quoted, we can give them a disability insurance policy along with the life insurance for the same price expectancy that we set up front. Right, The standard is actually preferred on the life side, but for the same standard rate, we have the life insurance and the paycheck, the protection disability insurance. Um, so on and so forth with the DI waiver premium rider. With, pre with permanent life insurance, this is a great rider that utilizes uh, an ability to place mark where we can pull it out when we actually get the life insurance approved and put it in fully comprehensive income protection policy, oftentimes for very similar and sometimes even less rates. Uh, again, allowing us to have that conversation, that is a great rider, but let's face it, it does not necessarily help the life insurance to stay strong because during that period of disability, that rider allows the client to not have to pay their premiums. But the simple fact is, is it's not being paid for them. Therefore, they're losing some of the cash value. And again, some of the nice key pieces to why that permanent life insurance was a good option for them. Again, using the DI waiver premium rider as a placeholder for a fully comprehensive income protection plan. Uh, how about the mortgage and life insurance, right? We're covering the life insurance and oftentimes we're using that again as income replacement. Well, let's also maybe look at the idea of utilizing at least enough income protection, paycheck insurance, disability insurance. It's all the same, right? Just different names, different packages with different bows on it. But maybe we at least set that up to cover the mortgage so that we know that the life insurance will protect, again, some of that income loss, uh, and we're also going to make sure that the mortgage is covered should someone suffer the disabling event and therefore obviously be able to keep the life insurance in force as well. Because I'm pretty sure that a client is not going to lose their home before they have to cash in their life insurance, right? So we're protecting both uh, in that regard. Uh, and again, think of your older clients on the life insurance side. I think there's some opportunity when asking for referrals if we utilize a product line that does not keep us on a horizontal focus, right? We're talking to someone older, um, late 60s, early 70s, and we're asking them for referrals. They're going to be referring us and thinking about people in a very similar walk of life and way of life. But the income protection story would refer to more of their kids or grandkids or people a little bit younger and take us out of, again, uh, kind of a minute way of thinking. We want to go macro, not micro. Uh, as well as the fact that, again, income protection is the morbidity, life insurance is the mortality, and these are both capital M words uh, that I think really need to be brought together as a package. On the investment planning side, you know, what do we often think of the biggest threat to planning that we've done in the past, that we're currently doing with clients, as well as where our focus will be into the future? It's going to be, you know, the interest rates in the stock market and, you know, kind of the product portfolio itself. But isn't maybe the biggest threat kids or grandkids or potential people that maybe used to be dependents that can once again become dependents should they suffer a disabling event, have two or three kids, have a house that they can no longer pay for. Now they're going to be calling mom and dad and grandma and grandpa for some help. We think about disability insurance and long-term care as basement protection programs. Um, the idea with disability insurance is protecting the basement of the parent grandparents. LTC is protecting the basement of the kids' grandkids. So again, the idea that uh, yes, there's gonna be an emotional side to what happens with some of those people that again used to be dependents and now are going to potentially become dependents. Um, we can't take away the emotional side of a disabling event, but what we want to do is relieve the financial strain. And that's really what we're talking about here. Uh, let's not force our clients into having to refinish that basement that they've kind of been putting off and dropping 30 grand again to move the families in. Again, the referral side of things. A lot of these investment financial planning clients are probably going to be either a little bit older, maybe they're currently insured, maybe their health is deteriorated to a point where maybe they can't become insured with a disability insurance contract. But again, we can still utilize these clients to refer to people that would be more of an income protection client. And again, bringing in the disability insurance idea is going to allow us to refer into pockets that the current products and portfolios we're working with would not make them think of referring into. 
Let's also think about the DOL, right? Now, this is really getting into some scary stuff, right? We've kind of diverted away from it a little bit now, but let's face it, this is going to be a continued focus uh, via the government insurance board, so on and so forth. Uh, I think that there's in the investment financial planning as well as life insurance and really all of our licensed insurance markets, there's some fiduciary responsibility to have disability insurance as part of what you're offering. Um, now, there's obviously no exact statutes that point to disability insurance as being a mandated offering that you need to bring to the table, but I sure would hate to be uh, in a situation where that's being questioned in any way, shape, or form. Again, you're going to oftentimes be looking at a solution-based approach, right, with investments and financial planning. Uh, you are creating uh, the necessity and the need for this income to continue to go into these financial markets, into this portfolio. But isn't an income protection plan the only way you can basically guarantee that that continues? Um, there's this fun game, right, and it's kind of the first one to talk loses. Well, we just ask our clients, uh, and this takes them away from what people mainly connotate to the need for disability insurance. Mr. And Mrs. Smith, could you let me know what 6, 12, and 24 months without a paycheck would do? And that's either to your personal life, to your investment financial planning portfolio, whatever that may be. And sit back and wait for them to answer. Uh, it needs to be in their own words. They need to create this problem that you have a solution for in your back pocket, which is income protection. Uh, and again, this is either for them or their kids and grandkids, whoever would be actually the best fit for someone making an income and needing some replacement of that income should they not be able to work. Uh, on the retirement protection, let's face it, there's plans versus reality, right? The reality is you actually need income to continue through your working years to be able to get to that retirement place. Let's also face the fact that even a short period of time, let's call it six months being out, you basically can tack those six months and probably an added year on top of that into the end of their working years just to make up for the fact that they had that, that six month hit. And how horrible would it be if during that six month period of time, they actually had to borrow against what they've already built for retirement planning? You know that number one, you're going to get heavily penalized for doing that. And then number two, it's gonna be very hard to play catch up. Again, that six month period of time that they're out might take them years to make up for and at the end of the day, not allow them to actually retire on that certain plan. Again, into the referral stage, uh, the retirement planning is gonna be for a certain niche of client, but disability insurance is gonna get us into much different and better niches. Uh, let's also face the fact that with return of premium, which is pretty specific to Illinois Mutual, we're not the only player in that return of premium game, but we're one of the very few. This allows us really the idea of protecting retirement and really doing more of a financial planning type insurance policy because we have a chance to get 100% of our premium dollars back at retirement age if we never use the policy. The assumption in every client's mind is that they're never going to have to utilize this policy, but guess what? They don't get a vote. Hopefully, they're the three out of four people. If you look at the odds that actually would not trigger one of these policies, one out of four people would. But with return of premium, we're really, again, able to align this insurance policy along with what we're already doing with clients, which, again, is making sure they're financially viable, as well as, again, going to retire and follow that kind of path to retirement that they're expecting to do. On the PNC side, again, this is protecting your renewals. This is insulating your book. This is offering a multiple line uh, that is going to be a huge key to keeping the other lines in force. And one of the most uncomfortable situations I think any producer in any of these lines could ever be in is if their clients were approached by another financial professional, uh, another PNC agent, another risk protection professional. Now, I don't think that anyone on this call or anyone connected to Illinois Mutual or Jair and Company would ever lose a client based on someone approaching them. But it could be very awkward if that other person that approached them talked about income protection or disability insurance. And then when coming back to you, the client brings this up, you have to concede that you could have spoken about this as well. You could have been the first one to offer this. And you have to essentially admit that you haven't taken as much of a focus in this realm as you should have. And really, in the client said, you're almost conceding that you didn't find it important. 
Uh, now, we know that's not the case. We know there's a ton of reasons why this would not be a proprietary focus for you. But again, make sure you're avoiding that situation where you're going to have to churn your way out of an uncomfortable uh, situation and scenario. As well as, let's face it, you can build new opportunities by bringing this added market into your uh, portfolio because, again, you can refer uh, and get referrals from people that maybe you never would have uh, been able to get connective tissue to because of what you proprietarily focus on. Let's also face it that W-2 employees and business owners are going to be great opportunities in this marketplace. Uh, very unique and kind of separate with how we approach those, but we'll get into into some business owner specific focus next week. But again, just wanted to point out that this uh, income protection is for everyone out there earning a paycheck and working because they have to, not just because they want to. Why should we sell disability insurance? Well, obviously it's gonna protect what you currently do. Uh, and that has to do with protecting what you put in place with clients before in any of these markets, what you plan to place with them now, and definitely uh, helps protect what, what you plan to do in the future. 97% plus persistency with this stuff too, folks. Once in force, it stays in force. Your necessity and your need and the reason why you protect your paycheck does not become less five or 10 or 15 years from now. It almost becomes more important. So again, let's lock their health in now while they're the best possible underwriting class um, and health rating that we can get. And we know what's going to stick, and we never have to worry about that side of the fence again. Because let's face it, um, no one jumps up and, and sings a song of rainbows and unicorns when it comes to underwriting. So let's do it as soon as possible so that we're getting the best possible health reflection that we can get. This is going to separate yourself too, folks. This is going to put yourself in the driver's seat to be able to, again, align with your clients even further. And again, let's face it, protect what happens more often often than anything else that we work in as far as risk protection goes. Uh, and again, who's your first customer as well? Pretty hard to have conviction in talking about this with clients if you don't own it yourself, whether that's with Illinois Mutual, one of the other six or seven major players in the industry, at least put something in force. Not only is it you taking responsibility for your own paycheck protection, but again, a lot more conviction when talking with clients. I wanted to thank you guys for your time today as always. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with uh, Jetter and Illinois Mutual and Oscar and myself. Really appreciate it uh, and really hope that you can join us next week as well. You have a fantastic day. And Oscar, I will let you take us out, sir. Perfect, perfect, Brock. Uh, thanks for uh, taking the time to uh, teach us about disability. As you know, disability always serves as a well-rounded uh, financial um, base for your clients and kind of helps you fulfill that fiduciary duty a lot more better. But uh, any questions or if you ever need a quote, uh, just uh, feel free to reach out to me and uh, we can kind of get you all set up. But uh, overall, I do want to thank you for your time for attending and uh, have a nice day and take care.